Which are joint. Goosebumps. And Erica and her mom were speechless too. It's either just a super eerie coincidence or Richie sent that message from the grave. Moving on to number two, we have the taxi driver. Yeah, I'm sorry, but this one is a little depressing compared to the other stories on today's list. Poison. Oh, Three, two, one, action. Push, pie. Okay, the fun is out there. <coughs> oh, I guess I'll see ya uh, the next day when I get back home. I guess I'll see you then, yo. Oh hi, it's the Guess next what? day. 30 years later, in 1929, his smoke some weed for day on my YouTube. In the exact same place. Okay. The smoke of bronze. Right? That is crazy. A father and a son from the same family being killed by lightning in the same place. What are the chances uh, of that? Well, 20 years after that, on October 8th, 1949, a man called Roller Primada was also killed by lightning on exactly the same spot. He was the son of the second victim and grandson of the first. Incredible. I'm seriously wondering if that family was like made out of metal or something because nobody should have tried lightning that much. Let's pause it. Head back to the dorm, head to bed. You know the rules rule. Skip, sk skip class. Head to bed, wake up, skip class. Why not? Huh.
7 in the morning. Let's head out, yo. Huh. Push play. Head to bed, wake up in the morning, another day at the bond school. <laughs> Head to bed. Push play. What video should I watch? Hey, Dad. What are you doing here, daughter? And let me guess. No. Tell me what you did. What did you do to end up here in the boarding school? Oh, I. Someone picked picked on me, so I punched him in the face. I punched him in the face, and I keep punching him, keep punching him. So I got expelled. The court sentenced me here. Fair enough. Just like you, Dad. What did our mom name? What did uh, your, your mom name you? Tracy. My name is Tracy, Daddy. Okay, so Tracy? Yeah. Cool. How do you know, Tracy? Just turn five years old. Cool, that is quick, keep going up fast. I know. <laughs> Look at you, you're growing up fucking fast. I know, right? So Tracy daughter, you wanna go out with me? So baby, we can go out, Daddy. Going overseas, cool. Don't get stuck with a messy stash you know how to cook? Yes. Cool. He's a joint. Thanks, baby. You welcome. What's your joint now? There's some mighty strange people out there in the world, and maybe one of them is you. Well, if you show up on this list, then that is certainly the case because we're exploring some of the most. Let's go to the kitchen, in the dorms area. And you can cook me up a fucking garlic bread. Dan, are you hungry, Daddy? Yeah, I am. Baby sister, ho. Cool, let's head there then. Done. I forgot what is it, this one, the dorms, I forgot what is this one here, yeah, I think it was here, dude. Then the kitchen should be 
Okay. Kitchen, kitchen. No, door though. Go cook me up a garlic bread. I'll be waiting right here and smoking. Got a daddy? Good girl, bitch. Now go cook me up like a good girl you are. According to some Mars, during the reign of King Louis XIV of France, he died on November 19th, 1703, using the name Marchioli. No one is known to have seen his face since it was disguised under Here a black go. velvet fabric mask, which was there mistook quick. for an iron mask. I know, I'm a quick cooker. What can I say, Daddy? Historians cool. Have long contested Let's his eat now. Let's eat the bit. Did you like it, Daddy? Yes, I did do it all. Come on, let's go outside and chill and smoke. Done. Do you wanna fuck after? So, so we do wanna fuck at in the classrooms in the school or oh, what? In the classroom. Cool. I know why. The school is middle school, high school. The sporting school is middle school and high school sporting school. Yep, it's so is. So, which class do you want to chill at? Chillin. This class down here, I'll show you. This way. Right here. This cross here. Let's turn here. Damn my baby daughter. Let's go for over here. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, here. Ah, uh, shit. How am I supposed to? Let's chill outside of the school, walk out here, then we'll go in and fucking there. Fair enough, Daddy. I know what, Tracy daughter. Push pie. Anna Anderson was a fraudster who claimed to be Russia's Grand Duchess Anastasia. Anastasia, the youngest daughter of Russia's last Tsar and Tsarina. God damn II you and have Alexandra, have your mother's ass. I know what that is. In Yekaterinburg, yes. Russia, on July 17, 1918, along with her parents and, and your mother's kids tell you what they discovered until Thanks, Daddy. Anderson you welcome my baby to a psychiatric institute in 1920 after attempting suicide in Berlin. Anderson joined that she was a Russian Grand Duchess first came to light in March 1922. Let's pause it. Let's go to here, Khan. No, let's go to here. Press pie. Anderson, said to be an imposter by most members of Grand Duchess Anastasia's family and those who knew her, including court tutor Pierre Gilliard, but others were convinced that she was Anastasia. Anderson was identified as Franciska Szkanskowska, a Polish hmm. factory worker with a history of mental illness by a... a Polish factory worker with a history of mental illness by a private investigation funded by Tsarina's brother, Ernest Luis, Grand Duke of Hesse, in 1927. The German courts determined that Anderson had failed to show she was Anastasia after a long legal battle, but her claim acquired popularity due to media attention. Anderson lived in nursing homes and sanatoria, including at least one asylum, 
in Germany and the United States between 1922 and 1968, with various supporters and in nursing homes and sanatoria. In 1968, she moved to the United States. Number 10. Boy who says he was a Civil War soldier in a past life. Chase Bowman, five years old at the time, was startled by a fireworks show on July 4th, 1988. Carol, his mother, felt it was weird because he had never experienced anything like that before. His phobia of exploding noises came stronger over the next few months. Carol sought assistance from a hypnotherapy friend. Chase appeared to be transported to a Civil War battlefield throughout the session. He claimed to be hiding behind a rock with a large rifle. He also saw the shooting of a black soldier. Chase was shot in the wrist and sent to a field hospital in his eyesight. He was ordered back to the front to man a cannon after being bandaged. He was then slain, he said, during the struggle. He seemed to have had a previous existence during the Civil War. Carol was confident that he could not have known any of these details because he had never seen or read about them. He then sketched sketchy drawings of the field hospital and the artillery he saw. Historians of the Civil War thought the illustrations were highly accurate. He also had eczema on his wrist, which disappeared shortly after his hypnotic session. Carol grew interested in children's former lives and went on to write a book on it called Children's Past Lives. Number 9. Dorothy Edie. Dorothy Louise Edie, commonly known as Amseti or Amseti, was a folklorist and custodian of antiquities in the United Kingdom. She was the caretaker of Seti I's Abydos Temple and a trots woman for the Egyptian Antiquities Department. She is well known for because her life and baby daughter. Was priestess in ancient Damn Egypt my baby daddy. and former life, as well as her to extensive my whole. historical I know. studies in Abydos. Many articles, television Let programs, me fuck, can and you biographies gag me and choke have me? been written on her life and achievements. Sure. In 1904, How far Dorothy do you want my dick to go? All the she way in, Daddy. Sure, daughter. Tracy Boo-Boo. And temporarily appearing to be dead and requesting to be brought home. She'd got foreign accent syndrome Can I bash another in you? Years, yes, let's have kids together. Cool, good girl, my little whore. I know what, Daddy. ...between Christianity and heathen Egyptian religion. After being escorted to the British Museum oh, by her parents daughter. and seeing an image in the New Kingdom yes, Temple Exhibits area, the little Edie exclaimed, There's my house, says the narrator, but yes. where are the trees? What happened to the gardens? The temple was dedicated to Seti I, Ramsay the Great's father. Amongst her people, <sighs> she raced into the Egyptian chambers, kissing the sculpture's feet. Number eight. Hopefully we don't get caught court. fucking in the court. A well-dressed guy arrives at the If we do get caught, oh Japan well. In July yep, oh well. He goes through customs if we like don't get caught, cool. Fuck you. Whatever yeah. transpired after yep. that has left everyone perplexed and concerned. When customs agents questioned him, the strange traveler claimed to be from Torrid. The mysterious man said that this was his third trip to Japan from his own country. Officers were surprised to discover that there was no country named Tord. The individual, described as Caucasian with a beard, spoke French as his first language. He was, however, said to be fluent in Japanese and a variety of other languages. Officers were baffled since they had never heard of such a place before. The man's passport was, of course, issued by the Tord. The passport appeared to be genuine, but the location was unfamiliar. Even after the individual was handed a map and asked to point out his homeland, he instantly indicated to the area where the Principality of Andorra is located. Andorra is located on the French-Spanish border. The man said that his nation had been around for thousands of years and was perplexed as to why it was labeled Andorra on the map. For a long time, the man fought with the customs authorities and refused to give in. Number 7. Zodiac Killer 
the Zodiac murderer was the moniker of an unnamed serial killer who terrorized Northern California in the late 1960s. The case has been dubbed America's most famous unsolved murder case, having become a part of popular culture and prompting amateur investigators to try to solve it. Between December 1968 and October 1969, the Zodiac murdered five people in the San Francisco Bay Area in rural, urban, and suburban settings. His known attacks occurred in Benicia Vallejo, unincorporated Napa County, and the city of San Francisco yeah, proper, bye. where he targeted young couples and a lone male taxi driver. Two of his intended victims made it out alive. The Zodiac claimed responsibility for the murders of 37 people, and he's been linked to a number of additional cold cases, some in Southern California and others beyond the state. The Zodiac came up with the term in a series of taunting letters and cards he sent to local media, threatening murder yeah. sprees and bombs if they didn't print them. Cryptograms or ciphers were included in some of the letters in which the killer claimed to be gathering his victims as slaves for the hereafter. Two of his four oh, ciphers have yet to be cracked and one yes, took daddy. one years to crack while numerous populations have been kill, baby proposed as to the identity of the killer, Arthur Lay Allen, a former elementary school teacher and convicted sex offender who died in 1992, was the only suspect ever officially named by authorities. Number 6. Peter Bergman, the man who never existed. The Peter Bergman case concerns the death of an unnamed individual on or around June 16th, 2009, in Silgo County, Silgo, Ireland. On the 12th of June, the guy who went by the pseudonym Peter Bergman checked into the Silgo City Hotel, where he stayed for the majority of his visit to Silgo. The man's activities were filmed on CCTV cameras all across town, but the specifics of his acts and goals are unclear. He had few and Encounters with other individuals, and nothing is known about his background or the cause for his visit. The corpse of an unnamed male was discovered on the morning of June 16th at Roses Point Beach, a renowned fishing and amusement spot near Silgo. The Garda have never been able to identify the individual or generate any leads in the case. Despite a five month probe, the case is frequently likened to the Tamam Shud case, despite the fact that the Bergman case has received far less attention and worldwide publicity. The public is unaware of this matter, and the official probe has not gone beyond Ireland. In the 2010s, the case attracted increased attention. It was the subject of the Whitechapel murderer. We took another joint baby daughter. Both criminal case Damn baby daddy. Good job, my whore. I know. Female prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums of London's East End were frequently targeted yeah, by Jack the Ripper prior to the abdominal mutilations their necks were severed, internal hmm. organs were removed from at least three of the victims, leading to speculation that their attacker had some anatomical or surgical knowledge. In September and October 1888, rumors that the killings were linked grew louder, and media outlets and Scotland Yard received several letters from people claiming to be the killer. The term Jack the Ripper came from a letter made by a man claiming to be the killer and widely circulated in the press. The letter is commonly regarded to be fake, prepared by journalists in an attempt to generate interest in the subject and increase circulation of their publications. George Lusk of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee received a from hell letter that included part of a preserved human kidney supposedly retrieved from one of the victims. Because of both the exceptionally violent nature of the killings and media coverage of the crimes, the public began to believe in a single serial murderer known as Jack the Ripper. Number 3. Agent 355 Agent 355 was the secret name of a female spy who worked for the Culper Ring. Female 
spy who worked for the Culper Ring during the American Revolution. Agent 355 was one of the first U.S. spies. Her true identity remains a mystery. The number 355 might be decoded using the Culper Ring's old technique, but if female agent 355 is mentioned just once in any of Culper Ring's missives in a letter from Abraham Woodhull, Samuel Culper Sr., to General George Washington, in which Woodhull described her as one who hath been ever serviceable to his correspondence. Agent 355's exact identity is unclear, although some things about her appear to be evident. During the Revolutionary War, she acted as a spy for the American Patriots, and she was most likely recruited into the espionage ring by Woodhull. Because of the way the code is written, it appears that she may have had a certain level of social clout. She was most likely in New York City at the time, and she met Mayor John Andre and Benedict Arnold at some point, and a strong Woodhull's next-door neighbor has been mentioned as a probable identity for Agent 355. Strong is accused of assisting the Culper Ring by informing its members of the whereabouts of Caleb Brewster, who plundered British goods in his whaleboat throughout Long Island Sound, after Strong provided him with a safe haven. Number 2. Tank Man the nickname Tank Man, also known as the Unknown Protester or Unknown Rebel, was given to an unidentified Chinese man who stood in front of a column of tanks leaving Tiananmen Square in Beijing on June 5th, 1989, mm. the day after the Chinese government's violent crackdown on the Tiananmen Square protests. The guy continually moved his position as the lead tank maneuvered around him to disrupt the tank's intended path around him. The incident was captured on camera and shown to a worldwide audience, it is regarded as one of the most iconic photographs of all time on a global scale. The photograph, as well as the circumstances surrounding it, are censored in China. There is no accurate information concerning the man's name or fate, and nothing is known about what happened to the tank crew. Tank Man was not the only individual who obstructed the tanks during the demonstration, according to at least one witness, but Tank Man is unusual in that he was photographed and captured on video. Number 1. Jenny Cockle Jenny Cockle so no, John, baby daughter. is an English John, my baby daddy. Good girl, my hoe. I know what, daddy. Who are you? A uh how? Who am I? Daddy. Yep. You're my hoe and I'm your daddy. Yes, Stephanie. Baby daddy. Good girl, my old bitch. I know. You're my old bitch, aren't you? But it. The Almond Brothers were started by Next Next video <laughs> Oh shit Love you. Love you too, Daddy. You're my house, Daddy, little bitch. Aren't you? Yes. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is beating all odds with this first film being considered one of it. Who's my daddy? 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 Who's my
I'm your daddy. Yes, daddy. Guillermo. How? I know. So that new Endgame deleted scene with Iron Man is super trendy right now. Moments like that are abundant in the history of Disney movies too though. From a reimagined Emperor's New Groove to the scrapped dark moments in Toy Story, all of these uh. deleted scenes have something in common though. They all change the foundation of the movie that they're in. So, let's jump into this and get ready to have your minds blown yeah, by these yeah. entries. <laughs> so fun fact for you Elsa wasn't always the relatable character that we see her as in the movie actually the original storyline kept her as a straight up villain yeah, whose heart turned frosty when her lover left her at the altar mm, yeah that's way less exciting good move changing at Disney the first premise would have given fans a straight up hero versus villain face off the climax didn't even have Anna and Elsa as sisters or royalty there's something so dull about the concept. Giving Elsa a frozen heart over a boy, it's the wrong decision. And it clearly hurt the rest of the movie doing that. Thank goodness the creators came to their senses. Number two, Scar's true end. A whole new generation just witnessed Lion King for the first time. The only problem is that their version doesn't include animals with emotion. I mean, look at all those blank faces. It's like staring into the souls of mannequins. Anyways, turns out that the animated version had to cut a bit of that emotion out of the story. The original ending totally included Scar being engulfed by the flames. Yeah, little Timmy already received enough emotional trauma watching Mufasa get trampled. Watching Scar reach such a dramatic fate? That would have been too much. Even for Disney. Number three, Human Again and Beauty and the Beast. There's a lot of Disney fans out there asking themselves why they had a crush on a candlestick as kids. That's the kind of weird stuff Beauty and the Beast did to us as children. So, while it's fun to watch these inanimate objects come to life, one has to wonder why they didn't get more screen time, especially given all the crushes on Lumiere. Initially, the storyline included a huge musical montage. All the characters we saw as objects would dance around and sing about what it would be like to be human again. Now, we know what you're thinking. Didn't this scene happen in the film? Well, yes, Imaginary Viewer, it did happen. They actually cut seven minutes from it though and that's some serious screen time missing no one knows how deep the song went it's up to our imaginations now number four the graveyard scene in cars let's take it back to the year 2006 you're watching cars on your new video capable ipod with headphones in the back seat of your parents car life is good and this will have another join damn well, baby daddy good girl my baby whole daughter for some Pretty reason the writers thought that it'd be a good idea to add a moment of existentialism to the film. Lightning McQueen is making his way back to the interstate. He's totally lost and actually yeah, stumbles man. upon a car graveyard. Yeah, a literal pile of car carcasses. <laughs> Picture the dread in McQueen's eyes and try to tell us that that doesn't completely change the film. Number five, Up's two brothers. Remember all the fully grown adults in the movie theater crying at the first five minutes of Up? Yeah, turns out that we didn't need to go through all that emotional suffering originally. The creators had totally different plans for the film. <sighs> all those heartfelt tears. <laughs> for nothing. The first storyboards in the movie involved two brothers living in a floating city all to themselves. So the theme actually remains close to the same. Up is all about isolation and the fear of opening up to other people. In this case, the two brothers share that isolation and simply refuse to come back down to Earth. It's not the same plot, but a lot of the overarching goals are still there in these alternate scenes. Number six, Tangled's Reverse Enchanted. Soon to be an Academy Award winner, Amy Adams, starred in a movie early in her career called Enchanted. You remember Enchanted, right? Man, that was a weird film. Turns out, writers over at the Mouse House Court were inspired by the concept in a weird way. Tangled was supposed to be the exact opposite, where a real girl from San Francisco gets taken into a fairy tale. Good idea, Disney. 
nothing shouts this is totally the opposite idea than switching New York for San Francisco. We don't know what they planned for this alternate version. Was it still going to be all animated? Of all the entries on this list, this one really gets our imagination rolling. Number seven, Ursula's family connection. A quick caution to all you Little Mermaid fans out there, this one is about to get real. Okay, we're gonna put this out there, so get ready, Internet. Ursula's villain motivation makes no sense at all. She's honestly evil for evil's sake. No amount of disagreement in the comments section is gonna change that, but feel free to try. That being said, it turns out that there's a better version of her character that never made the screen. Originally, Ursula is the estranged sister of King Triton. It builds levels to her role and balks up her old motivation. The conflict between her and Ariel feels more personal that way. Everything that comes out in the third act holds more weight, and people would have invested more. Sadly, this concept was left on the cutting room floor. Number eight, Monsters, Inc. haunts adults. So, Monsters, Inc. is a great movie. If you don't randomly sing, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me, to yourself, then what are you doing with your life? All joking aside, it's incredible that there's another version of this film out there that seems just as good. Pixar imagined Monsters, Inc. as a more adult-centered story. The monsters actually haunted one adult character. In this plotline, the monsters represented different childhood traumas and fears that the character never confronted. Yeah, talk about a dark way for Pixar to go. And you thought Wally was depressing. Okay, yeah, sure. Wally still wins this one, but this alternate Monsters, Inc. could have been a close second. Number nine, Sean Yu's secret ability. Sean Yu oh. proves that sometimes a villain without much dialogue can prove to be a menace. He's so easy to root against, and it happens with barely any screen time. Disney must have known this because they cut a scary power that the character was shown having in earlier cuts. His band of raiders is tearing through a village in China. Fire and chaos engulf the screen. We see Sean Yu's falcon swooping across the sky. Then the kickers reveal to the audience. Sean Yu can see through the falcon's eyes. It has a bit of myth and lore to Mulan that was better left cut out. Yu works better as a grounded villain with no sort of mystic power. The alternative changes the rules of the movie just a bit too much. Number 10. Yeah, the brother. Pocahontas love song. People don't usually consider Pocahontas and John Smith a top Disney couple. That doesn't mean they deserve to lose out on their moment, though. Sadly, Disney cut a colossal scene that told us more about these two together. The whole movie gets a bump in rankings if the song If I Never Knew You was kept in the final cut. This song made it through a lot of rounds of quality control. It was entirely recorded and animated. It seriously just missed out on the picture lock. The producers were worried that it came off as dull and unnecessary. They were wrong. So horribly wrong. What a shame, because it's truly a beautiful song that encapsulates their relationship. Number 11, meeting Hector earlier in Coco. Hector is a big part of the joy in Coco. He's an essential part of helping the audience understand the setting of Coco and how the inhabitants feel. <clears throat> of that, he's the second fiddle to Miguel's character as they begin their adventure. This is why the creators originally introduced Hector as a tour guide for a bus trip around the land of the dead celebrities. Sure, the original scene gave Hector a bit more humor to kick off his run in the movie, but they would have ended up sacrificing some of his emotional development. Making the switch was the right move in the end when it came to this scene. Number 12, Lady and the Tramp reverses society. With the new Lady and the Tramp coming out soon, a bunch of people are revisiting this classic tale. What you won't see in it, though, is a bizarre deleted scene in which the dogs imagine a different society. They ask themselves one simple question. What if the tables were turned? A parade of images of humans on leashes being walked by dogs hits the viewer. We're forced to reckon with the oddness of the habit. No, seriously, the humans even go for a walk in the park and get into all kinds of shenanigans. The scene definitely changes the moral of the story, but honestly, the film doesn't need the scene. We're confident that the creators knew that the scene was superfluous at that point and chose to leave it out for that reason. Number 13, Geppetto gets desperate in the whale. Whales tend to get the short end of the so another jump, baby. Damn, baby. Like it happens we more than necessary. Hole. However, outside I know what, the Daddy. free willy sequel, whales rise up from their place on the bottom and eat whoever is on top. A classic example comes in the form of Pinocchio, when the whole cast gets swallowed up. This time, a different aquatic animal nearly faced the music. Turns out Disney hates goldfish. Or, more accurately, Geppetto didn't care about Cleo. 
his pet goldfish. There's actually a deleted scene in the movie in which he considers eating Cleo. Yeah, I'm sure that would have really endeared Geppetto to the child audience watching. No one would have been traumatized by watching that whole fiasco unfold. Number 14, Mike and Sully's true first encounter. These two monsters go together like peanut butter and jelly. Watching these two set aside differences and become the ultimate scare team in Monsters University honestly felt worth the money grab. It was clearly meant to be. However, the fans of Monsters, Inc. had one obvious complaint to mount against the creators. In the original film, Mike and Sully contemplate their time together. They clearly say that they met back in the fourth grade. It turns out that the writers of Monsters University did not forget this factoid. There was a scene drawn showing them all the way back in kindergarten. So, um, that's not correct either. But it is certainly closer than college. Regardless, the scene didn't make the movie, but it would have gone a long way towards highlighting their destined partnership. Number 15, Bob's Barbecue Mishap. The Incredibles is one of the greatest animated movies of all time. There's no question about it. With that greatness means a lot of quality scenes were left out of the final cut. One such scene really emphasized Bob's inability to keep his powers a secret. The family socializes with their neighbors. No, we never see it in the 